Hi Virgo, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your Mercury Retrograde reading for you. Now, if this reading resonates with you, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be linked and listed in the description box below. Before we begin this reading, once again, just remember, do not respond to anybody who solicits you in the comment box, in, in the comment section, saying that they're me asking you for readings. It's not me. It's a scam. So be warned. All right. Now let's clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as you enter into this safe and loving space. And now let's let the bull sing as we see what the tarot has to say. How will Virgo be affected by Mercury retrograde January 30th to February 21st, 2021? How will Virgo be affected by Mercury retrograde January 30th to February 21st, 2021? How will Virgo be affected by Mercury retrograde January 30th to February 21st, 2021? Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Ooh. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly, guide this reading, and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. Let's move these over just a little bit so you can see better. And let's see what your chakra energy is going to be for this time. How will Virgo be affected by Mercury retrograde, January 30th to February 21st, 2021? How will Virgo be affected by Mercury retrograde, January 30th to February 21st, 2021? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. These four. And the interesting thing about Mercury retrograde is that the, the pre-retrograde begins on the 15th of January. So if you're sensitive to Mercury retrograde as I am, or to the moon and the planets and everything like that, here it starts, you'll start seeing the effect now. You'll start feeling the effect and like it's pulling you towards it. So even though it begins full force on the 30th, you will start to feel it. You can start feeling it before the 15th. You can start feeling it, you know, you know, now and it answers so many questions that it's like, why is communication getting muddled? You know, why are there these arguments here? And it's like, oh, I see it. And so let's see what your chakra energy is going to be. Determination, 
which is the solar plexus chakra, you are astound astoundingly determined during this time, very much having a lot of gut feels. The cool thing also about this Mercury retrograde is that it's in Aquarius. So Mercury retrograde really likes being in Aquarius. It feels very much at home there. And so this is going to be a bit of a gentler retrograde. And we can even, I could definitely feel that with the singing bowl, that this was a bit of a smoother time. Like Leo's singing bowl was not as smooth. So, and it showed up most definitely in the cards. You have forgiveness, the heart chakra right here. You have divine wisdom. This is the soul star chakra located six inches above the crown. And then finally, we have dreams, which is the third eye chakra. You're going to be really communicating through your dreams, but it would also be very beneficial for you, Virgo, during this time. If you want to go deeper into what it is that you're supposed to be learning during this time, what's supposed to be coming forward, to say to your spirit guides, name your spirit guide, if you can, if this name comes to you, or just say spirit guide, you know, please give me guidance, give me understanding during my dreams. And you are going to see that you wake up with really the answer of your heart being, yeah, really kind of the question of your heart, there we go, being answered in a way that you didn't anticipate, but in a way that really does correlate and is really quite relevant to you. Now, the left-hand side here is your inner self. The middle is your heart, your emotional self. The right-hand side, the public arena, the public self. So we have the five of earth, the star, Aquarius energy coming in, which is where this Mercury retrograde is. You have the queen of water, water sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, the four of air, the four of swords, the five of earth is the five of pentacles, the king of air, again, air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, oh, not Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, but amplifying this Aquarius energy. You have the lover, so that's also amplified. That's Gemini energy right here. You have the five of water, the repeat of the number five. Yeah, it has you moving towards this freedom, this sense of self. You have the queen of air, which I love. You're crowned by the king. You're rooted by the queen. There's some sort of soulmate, true love connection moving forward here. It can be you falling in love with life, but it's also there is something that you're facing during this Mercury retrograde that moves you towards love. It could be strengthening the love that you're in. It can be, you know, moving towards the love that you want, but there's something here and it doesn't have to do, it doesn't have to be involving another person at all. It can very much be like, I want to be in love with my existence, my soul, myself, my passion, my path. And you could have felt like the fire went out. You know, it can be that you got up, you do what you're supposed to do, but it's like, a drudgery. And you're going to see that this Mercury retrograde really challenges that for you, which is really cool. Then we have the Knight of Fire, Fire Sign Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. The Four of Water, the repeat of the number four, is saying here that you have to really focus on yourself. You have the Dreamer, which is the Fool. And then you have the Knight of Earth. So you're coming through here during this time, Virgo, as a knight. It says loyal, dedicated, honorable, kind, which is really quite beautiful and describes you very, very nicely. Now, what's also really cool about Mercury Retrograde, and I've been re reading Erin Sullivan, and she's an astrologer, and she says that you can, she discovered that the ratio time of Mercury Retrograde, the ratio time of Mercury spins into, spends in, spends in, there we go, spends in retrograde. Retrograde and direct. So retrograde is when it spins backwards. Direct is when it spins forward. Is equal to the time that human beings spend asleep and awake. So what you're going to find here is that during a retrograde, it's really your subconscious self coming forward. The battles that you're having, the incidences that you're going through, is this self-conscious, this self-conscious, it can be self-conscious, but also subconscious self leading you forward. And the first thing that you deal with here is a sense of poverty, a sense of lack, a sense of not being worthy of abundance. So let's look and see more deeply the energy around you that really needs to be, that you really need to be mindful of during this time. It's not a person, it's an energy. So it can be any person at all that brings us forward or that you might have it within yourself. So let's see here. What energy does does Virgo have to be mindful of during Mercury retrograde, January 30th to February 21st, 2021? What energy does Virgo have to be mindful of during Merc Mercury retrograde, January 30th to February 21st, 2021? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Okay, so we start off with Taurus. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. So if 
remember, as I, as Spirit said before, and I tend to forget, it's not a person here. It's, it's an energy. This is just going to be a very stubborn, a very kind of my way or the highway type of person that you need to be mindful of during this time. This person that has no give, no bend to them. And that's going to be very detrimental to you because yes, you can be stubborn. You're an earth sign energy. You can be stubborn, single-minded, single-focused. But if you let that take over and you let that energy become all-encompassing, you will find that that's where a lot of the challenges come forward, a lot of the doubts, a lot of the fears, a lot of the anger. And so here, there's, it's not a laissez fair attitude. It's just a kind of let things move forward naturally because you have the determination of the soul coming forward. You have this power around you, but you also have this gentle guidance that is going to need to be really embraced. And also it's going to be enhanced, <coughs> excuse me, as it is embraced during this time. It leads you then to the King of Pentacles. Okay. It leads you to a person very grounded, very stabilized, right? But very stubborn, very much it has to be this way. And you're going to find out this can even be yourself coming in and blocking you thinking, well, it has to be this way because it's always been this way and I need it to be this way. And you're going to find that you hit the roadblocks in a way that you thought set up, you know, it was perfect, had this all planned out. And you're going to find that for you, you need to kind of go against the routine. And you might need to make a new routine, but you need to go against the routine and embrace your inner understanding, your inner, you know, power, your inner contem contemplation. And then it leads you to the king of, of cups. The energy here that you have to be mindful of is this person is very logical, okay, about things. And will use that to kind of manipulate situations or to get what they want. It is manipulation. This person is going to use emotions. And I just see what these people, like this one kind of makes the earth shake when, when they bellow. This one will just make you feel so guilty. It's just, they're going to use guilt. They're going to use, you know, this manipulation of emotions to get what it is that they want. And to also, they're going to kind of like put that carrot in front of your face and say, if you really want it, you know, you will do this, you will do that. And those are going to be the type of situations you run into where you can think, wow, this person's really helping me out. You know, they're, they're saying, if I want to get here, or if I want this type of relationship, or if, you know, I really want to be happy in my life, this is what I have to do. And, but it's going to be like, if you do not follow their rules, then they're going to get angry. They're going to overreact and you need to step back because that's going to be a person who's really taking advantage of your good nature and really manipulating the situation. Your chakra energy of the solar plexus chakra, this determination, at times you feel like you're going against the tide of everyone and everything, emotions are running high, and you're determined to get to where it is that you know you're supposed to be, where it is that you know you want to be. This is going to be an imperative time to listen to your gut. This is also going to be a time where your body can start telling you, I don't want I don't want that. Like, I can't eat that. I can't drink that. I don't, I don't want that energy around me. And it's being very mindful of how you're fueling yourself, but also how you're feeling within yourself. But there is a stubbornness to you here, Virgo, which is really quite brilliant. It's like, I know what I want. I know where I'm headed. And then we have the heart chakra. Now the heart chakra with forgiveness, that's really powerful. In Mercury retrograde, things get mucky. They do. You know, words get get twisted, you know, emotions run high, you know, things become overwhelming and can become very overwhelming with the, with the heart chakra here. It is that forgiveness. It is that sense of, yes, I forgive others, but during this time, especially it's forgiving yourself because you're going to find yourself pulling up things from the past and saying, well, how can I do this now if I couldn't do it then? Or how can I forgive myself if I couldn't forgive them? And it's like every single step along the way, is, is a time for learning, is a time for understanding, is a time for deeper knowledge. And so here with forgiveness, it's not saying that you have to be perfect. It's saying, I forgive the mistakes that I made. I forgive the, the challenges that I've had. I forgive it so that I can move forward in my truth, in my understanding, in my passion. And you're going to find that this becomes very emotional because it leads to the poverty mentality that it's over you in your inner self. It doesn't have to do with money. It can do with love. It can do with happiness. It can be with peace. But there is something here where you were told and a negativity was spoken over you that said, you don't get to have this. And the forgiveness isn't in that person who said it because you might not even care about that person anymore. 
So you can find that forgiving them is cathartic and is very helpful. What you're going to find here is the forgiveness of self, the forgiveness of letting your life be sabotaged, the forgiveness of letting somebody else's truth become your truth, the forgiveness that you'll see as a personal flaw or a personal failing. That's what moves you forward. And that's going to be something that's very releasing for you. So do note that this could be a very sensitive, you will have, and not, it's not that it could be, you will have moments of great sensitivity because you're going to find that you are releasing a lot of the, the hurt, the pain, the disappointment that held you back. And then we move to divine wisdom. Divine wisdom with the earth star chakra is raining down on you. You're seeing things differently. You're understanding things more intuitively, more, you know, more deeply for yourself. And it's this wisdom that's guiding you forward. And then it leads you to your dreams. It leads you to instinctually what it is that you want. It leads you to listening to your third eye, listening to your third eye chakra, listening to the way the world is opening up to you, the daydreams that you have, the deeper knowledge that you are embracing, the dreams that lead you forward. And you're going to see here that it really does, and in this time, really has you challenging a lot of things that have felt like you're the outside looking in. It's kind of like you're window shopping, but it's not that fun window shopping. It's like, oh, we're going to go look around and, and see what's out there. It's that really depressing window shopping when you're just walking around because you're kind of like waiting for your shift to begin or something like that. And you're just looking at everything you can never have that will never be yours, the stores that you'll always be on the outside of. And this is a time where instead of being on the outside of feeling that lack, you step in and it's not... It's not, I'm barred from this. It's like, well, maybe not right now, but it will be. It will be that time where I can step forward, where I can see what's absolutely valuable and what's absolutely priceless to me. And I can change my world because I'm embracing this. And you're going to see that a lot of the things that have kept you on the outside, have kept you on the outside looking in, they start to crack because they're being challenged. And you're going to find that that's where a lot of your difficulties come during this time with the the challenges of the lack of the past, the challenges of the desire, desires of the future, the sense of thinking, oh my gosh, this is too good to be true, you know, type of thing. And almost the way we curse ourselves as we're trying to bless ourselves. Because you're having here a wish, be heard, be granted. You're having this inspiration, this power, this understanding come forward. And that's going to be one of the things that happens during this time. It's like a blessing and a curse comes at the same time. And I know curse is a very hard word, but it's, it's kind of the way you see it. It's the way spirit is showing it. It's like, well, I can move forward in this blessing, but I also have so much trials and tribulations and angers and hardships and pains and discomfort and despairs to work through, to look at, to, to move not only past, but to not, not move past because we never, we never leave our pains behind. They're always a part of us because they've made us. It's not having them be the anchor around our necks that keep us grounded to this one spot, that keep us from moving forward to where we need to be. And so you're going to start to see here that you're kind of shifting your mind. And this is during a time where if you don't, it's like if you don't shift your mind, you're going to feel like you're going a little bit bonkers because, you know, there, there just keeps on being challenges and apprehensions and things playing off of fears and despairs and, and, and doubts that you have. And you'll see that if you focus on them too much, or if you focus on them, they start to, to be what manifests within your world all the time. And now you're looking at what it is that you really desire. And it's that determination and it's that forgiveness, okay, to sit there and say, listen, this might be easy for me now, but it could even be like a few months ago, this seemed impossible. So why am I beating myself over, up over it? I move forward in my prosperity. You might even be saying now, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. It just feels like there's too much or like the energy has changed or I'm just exhausted. I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. And this is focusing on the little things that you can do to start to heal the situation, to start to guide you forward because divinity is going to swoop in there in a way that you're not expecting. And it's going to be really through your your dreams and this wisdom that comes forward and it brings you to the queen of water's energy it's tender-hearted it's empathetic it's patient it's loving it's the sense of i can have more than what i realize i can take care of myself i can move myself forward in love i can you know 
I can sit there and nurture what my subconscious is telling me to really look at, to really, you know, open up the doors. And as I'm looking at this, as I'm taking in this blessing, as I know that the only person I have any control over in my life is myself. Okay, you can't stop a toddler from having a tantrum. You can't make a person do what you want them to do. And so with the queen of water, it's like, but I can control me. I can look at the places where I get my joy. I can look at the ways that I, I budget my time. I can look at why I need to escape, why I know I have this to-do list, but I spend my time scrolling through my phone, you know, watching little little clips here and little things there that I think, oh, it's it's not long, you know, it doesn't it doesn't matter. But then if you watch like 50 of them, it, it all adds up. So here, what you're looking at, especially during Mercury retrograde, it's like, what are you trying to escape from that your subconscious is saying, look at me, look at me, pay attention to me. It's a lot of the doubts and the fears of thinking, I can't, I can't move forward the way that I want to. Because for longer than you've believed in yourself, you've doubted you, or the words of doubt have been planted within you. And now you start to look at the road that you've traveled, the hardships, the pains, the disappointments, the angers, the upsets, the upheavals, the, the, the sense of feeling unworthy, you know, oh, well, people who really succeed or people who get to move forward or people who, you know, don't have all this, you know, chaos in their life. That's how you get to be a success. But here with the Four of Swords, you're looking at things and you're saying, I'm looking at every hardship, every pain, every disappointment. And it's like, wow, look at what I've come through. The only time you hear people's hardships, pains, and disappointments is when they're telling you their success story. And I remember one time this this guy who, I don't remember where I saw him, but he was on television somewhere. And he was talking about how he started off bagging groceries. Yes, but his father owned the grocery store. So it was, it was, and it was like a chain of them. I was like, that's quite different than, you know, starting off bagging groceries. But he used it to show that he, he pulled himself like kind of like up by his bootstraps kind of thing or made it sound like he did. And here it's kind of like, if people can do that, and say, look at the struggle that I came through to now be the success. Look at the struggle you came through to stand where you are right now. You might not be the success that you want to be. You know, this might not be your end game, but this is, this is a jumping point. You have more knowledge, more resources than you did before. And this is going to be something where when the Mercury retrograde comes in, when things get turned topsy-turvy, where it feels like there's just this trickster aspect to things where things are kind of being turned on their head, you're going to sit there and, wi and wind up saying like, oh, but I face worse. Like I've, I've, I've stepped through harder and that's what you're going to do now because in your heart, you're a warrior. In your heart, because you're embracing forgiveness, because you have this wisdom guiding you, because you're letting divinity give you this insight through your dreams. You have the king of air, which is brilliant, imperial, okay, professional, oh, impartial, there we go, but also imperial here and diplomatic. And then you have here independent, experienced, realistic, and witty as the queen. So you're crowned in this energy of brilliance. You're rooted in this energy of realistic wit, of this like power, this quick-mindedness. And your heart is going to be guiding you forward. If you step back here, Virgo, and you say, what is my heart saying? Like, you know, what is it that I want? Because your heart and your mind are coming together in a way that kind of takes the breath away in a way that makes you not only realistic about a situation, but also makes you emotionally in tune to things. So you're not going to be, you know, unsensitive or you're not going to be disrespectful, but you're sitting there and you're saying, I am getting to where it is that I want to be. I'm a warrior of my truth, of my emotions, of my desires, of the way that I open up the door, of the way that I move forward to what it is that I love, to what it is that I want, because you have this beautiful soulmate connection. And it's with the lovers right here. So your heart is all about falling in love. Now, this can be the perfect time to kind of open up your world to love, to meditate upon love. You know, life will send you curveballs during Mercury retrograde where you're sitting there and you're thinking, I wanted love. Like, you know, what the heck is this? But it will send you either like little things to love and take care of, or, you know, just, it's just going to be something funny. It's like somebody sends you a plant in the mail or, or, or something to that effect. But there is, there is more here. There's like a sense of a door opening and it's opening to the lovers. It's opening to what you're nurturing. It's opening to what you desire. It's opening to the duality. So also 
you know, lovers, Gemini energy is ruled by Mercury. So when Mercury goes into retrograde in Gemini, which is when the next Mercury retrograde is, it really hits right in between the eyes. It doesn't hold anything back. And so here, it's kind of like you're fortifying yourself because there can be this bit of chaos around the heart, this bit of, you know, deeper understanding that's needed, this bit of, you know, pushing out of the comfort zone and this bit of power that you're calling upon. And so as you do so, you're falling into balance with yourself. You're seeing what drives you forward. And you're knowing that the Mercury retrograde is bringing out a lot of things that really need to be seen, that really need to be addressed. And you embrace that warrior mentality during this time, the sense of, I'm not taking other people's nonsense. I'm not, you know, I'm not fooling around here. There is something greater for me because you're moving away from the hardship, from the pain, from the disappointment, from the anger, from the despair. And you're sitting there and saying, I could look at this my whole entire life, but I'm looking at the two cups that remain. I'm looking at the minor arcana lover's card. I'm looking at the healing, at the love, at the respect, at, at the soul's connection. And that's what's opening the door for me. And that's where I'm leading myself forward. And there's a sense here of cutting through a lot of nonsense. And there's going to be a lot of nonsense that comes your way. A lot of people, you know, saying one thing but focusing on another. A lot of, you know, situations where you find you have to keep your cool and say, what is it that I want? Like, how is it that I want to move forward? You have to keep your head about you when all around you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, as Kipling said. So here, it's like you are finding that balance, that harmony. You are having that deeper insight. But at times, you're going to feel like that deeper insight is, isn't the blessing that, that it needs to be because people aren't hearing you. They're seeing what they want to see. But then when it comes to pass, instead of saying, oh, wow, you know, Virgo, you were right, or oh, wow, you had such insight, they blame you. So that is going to be also something that you need to be really aware of during this time because in the public arena, you're, you're coming through with night energy. You're coming through with the sense of, I'm moving forward. I'm going after what I want. You know, the night of fire is passionate, adventurous, self-assured, and restless. There is a sense of, there is more out there for me than I ever expected. I have to seize it. I have to go after it. Your passion can very much get the better of you during this time because there's so much that you want to be do you want to do and there's so much adversity that's hitting you in the face so much of your subconscious self saying you have to deal with this you know you have to see this you have to look at this and you're going to think to yourself I don't want to like leave me alone it's going to be very powerful here like leave me alone and the four of water is showing that divinity is going to hand you a gift and it's not going to feel like a gift. It's going to be one of those things that you think is going to slow you down on your way forward that you're going to sit there and look at and be like, oh my gosh, like, why the heck? Like, why the heck do I even have to deal with this? But when you step back, and this could be months from now, it could even be years from now, where you step back and you're like, that was a turning point. Like, that was a lesson I needed to learn because if I didn't face that then, you know, I wouldn't be able to do this now. And it winds up becoming one of your most cherished gifts, one of the things that you sit there and you really value having. Now, it can happen right in the day today. You know, when you sit there and you look at this aspect of your personality or you look at this way that you're seeing things and the way that other people are seeing things. And instead of changing your point of view, you're like, no, this is right. Like, this is what I need. And then moving forward in that truth. And it becomes a gift that you're not seeing as a gift. You're seeing as one more piece of work. But it becomes so valuable to you during this time, during this way forward. And other people here are going to see it as more of a gift than you do. They're going to see this way forward or this way of gaining an idea, of gaining an insight. And then you're going to see that they can be jealous around it. They can sit there and start talking about something that, again, you don't see as that valuable, as being super valuable to you. And you might know, not know what the heck they're, they're talking about. So do be mindful of that. The dreamer here is, is the fool. It's the person who says, I believe in the power of my dreams. I believe in the power of the way that I need to move forward. I'm not going to be held back anymore. I'm going after what I want, what I need, what I desire, who I am. And there's a lot of movement in the public arena with the knights, with the, with the dreamer here, with the way to move forward, with that taking that leap of faith. And it's also understanding that every single person who makes it is considered a dreamer. You know, every single person who becomes the hero of their, of their destiny is considered a dreamer. Now, it might not be 
in, in the way that we think, because they could be very practical, very down to earth people, but in their field, they could be considered dreamers. Like I have a brother who's a physicist and he has this way of being very creative, but also being very scientific. And his, his boss was like, but you, you have this way of, of dreaming, you know, of, of connecting. And, you know, you might not see that as, you know, yeah, it's kind of like you might not see the dream as being relevant, but it is so important to you. Even if you are the most practical, down to earth person, having that dream come forward and having you be able to move with it, you know, embrace different ideas, embrace different, you know, ways to, to achieve your goals and go after what it is that you want. You're going to see yourself moving in a direction that you didn't anticipate. And others might call it chaos. Others might doubt it, but you need to look at it and say, I need to keep on heading in this direction. It's not being foolish. It's not being naive. It's not, you know, being unrealistic. It is sitting there and saying, but there's something here. And it might be doing it on the side, you know, bringing this, working on the stream on the side, working on the way that you're moving forward on the side, but then bringing it into the light. But do note during Mercury retrograde, especially when you're trying to, to, to embrace and to share the dream that you have, you're going to find that words get tripped up on, you know, people don't really understand as well as they, as they should, or as you want them to. And that's just the slow and steady guide forward to say, keep, keep to your path, keep to what it is that you see, no matter how many doubters you have, because there's a loyalty, there's a, a dedication, there's an honorable kindness to you embracing your dreams, to you looking at your truth, to you saying, but this is the road I need to walk. And if you let other people knock you off your path during this time, when you can feel a bit vulnerable, when you can feel a bit overwhelmed, there is a chance that you won't pick it back up again. It's, or it will take you a while to come back to the point where you say, but there's something here. So just be very mindful of that. How will Virgo be affected by Mercury retrograde? January 30th to February 21st. How will Virgo be affected by Mercury retrograde? January 30th to February 21st. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Fantastic. One bonus card. Okay. And let's look at the energy that will aid you during this time. What is the ener energy that will aid Virgo during Mercury retrograde, January 30th to February 21st, 2021? What is the energy that will aid Virgo during Mercury retrograde, January 30th to February 21st, 2021? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Okay. So there's justice right here. Libra energy. Time frame September 23rd to October 22nd. This is an energy of being just, fair, and balanced. This is an energy also of discernment. So if you're being just to somebody at the expense of yourself, you have to kind of step back and say, what is balancing just and fair to the whole situation, not just to one person? So it's being discerning about the energy you let in around you. It's being discerning about, about every single aspect because it's like it matters and you're looking at it and saying, yeah, but it really does matter. It really does matter how I move myself forward. And then you have the Queen of Cups. So this is loving, healing, beautiful energy. And you can find this to be a little bit in conflict with the King of Cups because the King of Cups is emotionally manipulative. And the Queen of Cups is emotionally, astoundingly healing. It's a person that you just want to be around. It's an energy that makes you feel better. And it can be a time where you're, you're unsure which one is aiding you and which one is hindering you. Look at how energized you feel afterwards. If you feel like you could use a nice cozy nap because you feel so at peace, that's different. But if you feel drained, if you feel overwhelmed, if you feel 
tired, you know, that's going to be the King of Cups energy coming in, you know, kind of manipulating the situation, making you feel emotionally very vulnerable. And here with the Queen of Cups, it's it's empowering you. It's drinking deeper of the knowledge. It's opening up your heart, your soul, and your passion. And then we have here the King of Wands, Fire Sign Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This is an energy of passion, determination, rolling up the sleeves, going after things. That's going to be very very, very good for you. But what you have to remember is when you're rolling up the sleeves, when you're going after it, you have to ma make sure that it's what you want, not what somebody else wants of you. And also you have to make sure that emotionally, either you're not putting too much on the situation, like sitting there and, and holding too much to it. Like, I won't be happy if this doesn't come out perfectly type of thing. And letting yourself see what, see what comes, letting yourself kind of move with the wind and the feel and, and the essence of things. That's going to be very important. So we have the world, the five of winter. So you, you're, you're facing something that has held you back before. The nine of spring, which is the, the nine of wands. Okay. So yeah, something that's held back before other people's opinions that have made you, made you doubt what you're doing or, you know, made it feel more like a battle than you wanted it to. The six of autumn, the six of cups, the six of coins, sorry, the two of coins and the four of cups. We have balance, which is temperance, Sagittarius energy. You have the hermit, which is of course you Virgo coming through and you have the emperor, which is Aries energy. So the outer arena, completely powerful. The queen of autumn is the queen of, of pentacles. Okay. Generous, stylish, gracious, and practical. That's what you're embracing during this time. You're coming through with the essence of you and also yourself as a queen. So that's awesome. Absolutely awesome. The world is opening up to you. What you're facing now is what's held you back from letting the world open or from moving forward the way that you want to. You might even find that during Mercury retrograde, you'll have a tendency to sabotage yourself because you're going to see yourself moving towards something bigger, like something that you've always wanted. And instead of being like, oh, awesome, that's so cool. I, I've always wanted it. Your subconscious is going to be like, oh, oh, well, we could really mess up, can't we? <laughs> like that could really end poorly. I'm just going to protect you and I'm going to let it all fall to pieces. So here... It's, it's not denying yourself the world. It is opening the world to you. It is sitting there and saying, I deserve this. I can move forward this way. And it's looking at things and it's saying, all right, fine. You know, kind of bring it on. When, when you have these things that you faced before that have knocked you off your game, that have made you feel worthless or insignificant or overwhelmed. And you start to embrace the love that you have for your life and for yourself and what you desi desire. And you're going to start to see yourself walking forward in a way that's really quite different because you're really you-centric and not in that egocentric way, but in that sense of, well, how does this help me? And where does this guide me to be? And what is it that I really desire within my life? And looking at these things, and instead of saying, what does everybody else want from me? Or what does everybody else expect? expect? It's like, what do I expect? And how is this healing me? And it's not proving to anybody anything, because that can also be kind of a, a sticky wicket, where it's like sitting here now and saying, but how is it that I'm moving forward and claiming my life and my soul and my bounty? Because as you're, you're facing the hardships that you've been through before, as you're looking at things, you're going to start to really think like, oh, well, if I had if I had done this differently, or if I had done that differently, or if I had just been like everybody else, I wouldn't have had to have faced that. And the nine of wands has that sense of, of, of chaos to it, of everybody kind of coming at you. And it's saying here, stand your truth, know your truth, look at what it is that you desire and keep on moving forward towards your goals. Don't let other people knock you off your path because the six of pentacles is saying here, be balanced. As you embrace your prosperity, as you speak your truth, as you become that warrior king, all right, as you go after what it is that you love, things have to be balanced because you're going to find, just like the discernment energy that's coming forward, you're going to find that you need to be picky about 
what you let around you, about the energy that you're feeding off of, just like the food that we're feeding off of. If you only eat candy all day long, you can't expect to feel good. You'll have a tummy ache, right? And here, it's kind of like if you only let other people's emotions, you know, around you, like take and take and take, you're going to feel drained. You're going to feel overwhelmed. You're going to sit there and be like, well, when is it my time? And you're not going to understand that, that you kind of have to carve out that time for yourself and, and move yourself forward in that direction. It's kind of like, I cannot, I cannot be balancing everything for everyone. And that's where the two of pentacles comes in with the five, with the five of water, with the five of cups. It's like, I can't be balancing everything for everyone. I have to understand my balance and I have to balance me first and tell everyone and kind of like make these very clear boundaries. And then I'm going to see the blessing coming in because I can see it. I'm not so overwhelmed anymore that I can't even see it. It doesn't become a blessing. It becomes a, oh my gosh, it's another thing I have to do. And oh my gosh, you know, it's just one more thing on my plate. And then when that happens, even if the most wonderful thing comes by us, we're so drained, we're so drawn, we're so, we're so tired, we can't even see it as a blessing. We just think, oh my gosh, now, now what do I have to do? Like, now what do you want type of thing? And the four of summer, the four of cups, a gift comes to you and it comes to you and you'll look at it rather logically. And again, you're not going to see it as the intense gift that it is, but you are going to see it as something that's valuable or it's, that's interesting. And you're going to be like, hmm, why not? Why not see where this takes me? You know, why not kind of look at things differently? And it comes from this realistic, but also very defending, very powerful place in your life where you're like, no, I get to move forward in my truth. And you're going to have that tug of war with yourself during this time. There needs to be balance, okay? As you're moving forward, as you're embracing your passion, as these gifts are coming in, okay, the four of water grounds you here. And it's it's part of what crowns you in the in the main part of the reading. So here with the balance, it's like balancing the gifts and what it is that you desire, balancing everything that you have to do and everything that you want to do. It's a harmony. It's the looking at the spiritual side and the practical side, the wild side of our personalities and the tame side of our personalities. You're finding things coming into balance and that you're, you're saying there needs to be a balance here. It turns you inward. It has you looking at things more openly, more wisely, more, more truthfully for yourself as you begin your journey, because you are going to find that you can be easily swayed by what other people want, especially during this time. You don't really want to rock the boat. You don't want to, you know, have anybody mad at anything. And so here with the hermit energy, with the essence of you coming through Virgo, you need to step back, look at what you want, look at what it is that you desire, look at where it is that you're headed and say, this is how I'm opening up the door. This is where I need to be. This is what's right for me. I need this quiet. I need this moment. I need this contemplation. And it leads you to the emperor. It leads you to taking your power. It leads you to claiming that throne as you move forward slowly, steadily, and persistently towards your goals. And you're going to find that as you do so, there's a power to you. There's a might to you. There's a fire to you that you hadn't expected, that you, you didn't think you could be so passionate. You could be so determined about something. And it leads you to the queen of, of autumn, the queen of pentacles. And this is generous, stylish, gracious, and practical. It leads you to a place where you're stepping into that role, where you're stepping into the role where people look at you and are like, wow, Virgo, you, you really have it going on. Like you're really in alignment with where you're supposed to be. You might not be the like, you know, femme fatale, you know, type of thing, but it's not that place of poverty. It's not that place of lack. Subconsciously here, you are moving towards this place of bounty and it's really driving you forward. And it's really, it's changing the game. It really is. And it's moving you to a place of saying, I deserve this stone. I deserve this prosperity. I deserve this path forward. I deserve the bounty and the brilliance that is a part of me. And it's being very logical. It's being very, you know, succinct. And it's saying, this is me. This is who I want to be. And this is, this is where I'm headed in my life. Now let's see what your spirit animals have to say for this time. Virgo, January. Virgo, Mercury retrograde, January 30th to February 21st, 2021. Virgo, Mercury retrograde, January 30th to February 21st, 2021. 
angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. So we have here, we have the Nightingale Spirit. Love is all around you, and it is. It's going to be a guiding force in what moves you forward. Your love, your heart, that connection. And then we have here the Bat Spirit. A rebirth is assured. You're being reborn into your power, into your greater understanding. And then finally, we have the Scarab Beetle Spirit, which says magic works through you. And remember, in ancient Egyptian times, you know, in ancient Egypt, the scarab beetle was sacred. The magic within you is sacred. It is the God's head that's hidden within. Let that magic guide you forward. Let it move you. Kind of think outside of the box. Let yourself explore and become and discover. Now your subconscious spirit animal message is the peacock spirit. Let it shine. Let your heart shine. Your subconscious person message is the King of Swords. Again, the King of Swords coming through, it crowns you in your heart, and it's the sense of cutting through the nonsense, of seeing the meat and potatoes of it, seeing the heart of what it is that you want. And it can be that you're a bit prickly at times, you cut right to the chase, you're not going to be sitting there wanting the fluff and the nonsense, but you're moving towards this great and powerful truth. It brings you to your subconscious chakra self, which is personal power, it is the solar plexus chakra, it is moving in that power, in that determination, you're swimming upstream at times, you're going against the current of other people's beliefs, of what others want, and you're saying, but this is me, this is where I stand. And your subconscious tarot message is the three of fire. It's the three of wands. New horizons lay open to you. It's a new way of starting to look at things. Your subconscious is shaking you out of your comfort zones, shaking you out of the rut that you were in, shaking you out of what you thought like, oh, it could only be like this. And you're going to start to see that if you look beyond what you thought, like if you look past it, you start to see that like you look past what you thought things could be and you start to say, you know, guide me, let me, let me gain this understanding, you know, lead me forward. You're going to start to be surprised at what comes your way. And then to go deeper into the subconscious message, it's the four of coins. You're seeing that vampiric energy fall away, that energy that drains. It's the addictions, it's the doubts, it's the fears, it's the it's the kind of cancerous people in our lives that try to manipulate things and, and take away our joy. And you're going to see it fall away. And not necessarily fall away, but you're going to see yourself be like, I don't want this. I don't want this. It's not right for me. And you're going to see yourself starting to step out of it bit by bit. And that's what really also brings forward the new horizons. It's because you're not, you're not putting up with the leeches. You're just, you're just not. What drains away your power, your energy, your purpose, you're going to start to see you don't have time for. All right, Virgo, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as you move forward in prosperity, balance, and harmony of self. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Virgo.